Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game So Today I got an interesting episode for you guys today because this was originally designed to be a PSVR 2 PC adapter review and setup guide. I picked this thing up and figured why not use my VR headset for the PlayStation 5 on my PC as well. Even though I already own a MetaQuest, I figured it would be fun to see what this could do and talk about it in video form. Because it's not like the PS5 has the best VR library around. I would say that honestly, my original PSVR gets more gameplay in my setup on PlayStation 4 than this thing ever did. And because it isn't backwards compatible, you have to keep both around. But unfortunately, I let the content and my findings dictate the type of video I'm going to be making. And if you know me in the channel, you know I don't do negative videos very often whatsoever. But this thing absolutely drove me to my wit and it is a dumpster fire disaster, at least for me and a lot of other people online. And I'll explain in just a bit, but let's talk about what's actually in the kit if you want to try to pick this thing up. Because what I was expecting is to be able to use PSVR 2 the same way I use my MetaQuest 3 when I'm using my gaming and studio PC. And I will explain the specs later on, but all of my findings are based around having an i9-12900K as well as a GTX 3080Ti. None of the results in this video have anything to do with specifications of my system or bottlenecks so much so that I'll even give you use case statistics on the CPU and GPU side of things. But as opposed to getting a fun light gun experience like you just saw there, I got something completely different. But let's first talk about what Sony sells you for the money they're asking. This adapter actually isn't the most expensive thing in the world, but they really do keep it as cheap as possible. They even don't give you the cords that you need to complete this setup. It seems like they could have thrown in an extra dollar's worth of expense to give you everything you need in the box. And for some strange reason, Sony seems to think you need two different stickers on the box to make sure you can tell whether or not the seal has been broken, not one. And just like the PlayStation 5, honestly, this new flap system on their boxes, I just never love it. I always rip it. I know it's a small complaint, but just give me a real flap. I know you're trying to save on materials, but these things get damaged basically every single time. But that is definitely the high end of what we're talking about here, because the low point in this video is going to get very low. If we actually take a look at what we get inside the box, it really isn't much, but it should be everything you need, minus a display port cable to actually hook this thing up. You get a pair of directions, and honestly, I usually say just toss those to the side, but in this instance, the setup's so cumbersome, you're going to want to save them. Inside the main little pouch here, you're going to actually get the box that you're going to connect your PSVR to to your PC with. It's just a USB-C Type-A connector, and there's going to be a display port around the back that we'll get to in just a minute. Otherwise, the only other thing in the box is the power lead and the power adapter so for what you're paying here you're not really getting a ton for your money but if this thing actually worked on steam vr the way it said it was supposed to then maybe that would be a decent deal but come on sony you can't put a display port cable in the box they are insanely cheap i've got a bunch of spares this one was one that i had sitting around that i had tested before and it was like six dollars when i purchased it on the front of the box, you're going to get the USB-C connector to plug in your PSVR 2. Pretty simple, you really can't screw that one up, Sony. And if you take a look around the back, you're going to see we have the power adapter, that 5.1 volt barrel jack, and then we also have the display port cable connector. You're going to have to plug one end of this from the box into your PC GPU. If you have a display port connector on your motherboard, that is not the one you're going to use. This has to go directly into the GPU. And just so you know, in this video, I tested all three display port ports on the back of my 3080 Ti just to rule out any issues whatsoever. But I will say that when you actually get this thing set up, it is relatively cumbersome. It's a lot of wires, most of which will be behind or adjacent to your PC. But compared to the MetaQuest 3, either with one cable or even going over wirelessly, if you have a strong enough router, this is definitely way more of an involved setup on the cable side of things. So the first thing I did was unpair these controllers from my PlayStation 5 and pair them into my PC. And that actually went relatively smoothly for the most part. You just hold down two buttons, the PlayStation button and either the options or capture button until the blue light starts flashing on the controller and then your PC should recognize it perfectly fine. My PC saw both the left and right hand controller and it seemed like everything paired correctly but honestly I never got far enough to actually test any of this and you'll see in just a few moments. But I just connected this, everything was good to go, I had no issues here and I kind of expected to have some issues in this situation because I've read some real horror stories as far as actually getting these controllers to pair. Most people need to have an external Bluetooth adapter because even if their motherboard is new it seems to be throwing up a lot of problems and some people even with bluetooth adapters don't have any success getting the controllers paired or actually keeping them paired and obviously vr is not very fun if you don't have a controller in your hand but at least for me i was able to get them to pair correctly and there wasn't really any issue whatsoever in this situation 
The next thing you're going to need to do is download the PlayStation VR 2 application on Steam, and the first indication that things may not go as you expect is the mixed review. There are some positive reviews, and some people have gotten this thing working, but you're going to see review after review after review of either controller problems, the headset never working, or the headset working once and then never working again. And before you ask any questions or say user setup error, I will tell you the following. I tried five different display port cables. I tried every USB port on my PC. I unplugged every single thing plugged in via USB outside of my keyboard and mouse and the PSVR 2 adapter box and I was never able to successfully get any of this functioning. I was able to get the headset online and I could see something through it but I will give you an example of what I saw in just a moment and you will see 100% unplayable. Once you actually open up the software this is where the first start of problems started occurring for me. It gives you another diagram of how you have to hook everything up between your GPU between between the adapter box, between the PSVR 2 headset, as well as the wall power here. So you're not drawing any sort of power off of the USB hub, you're just sending data. And that's what I showed you in this shot here. All of the different wires and cables that you're going to have to have wired up correctly for this to even have a chance to work. Again, it's not going to be a clean setup. And on the MetaQuest 3, I definitely use AirLink there. I have a very powerful router in the same room and I'm able to play wirelessly, no issue whatsoever. But after that, you need to update the headset to make sure it can work with Steam VR and the PlayStation VR 2 app. So you will see here that the VR headset is connected. So you go ahead and hit next and it's going to run that update. But here's the thing about this update. It didn't fail once. It didn't fail twice. It didn't fail three times. And yes, I restarted my PC between installing the software and trying to update it. I have restarted it four times actually. I finally hit try again on one of the actual OBS captures and I was able to finally get this thing to update after 14 times. It took me 14 tries and 13 fails before the VR headset would actually update itself even to get to the next step. And there's absolutely no setup process I could have made a mistake on that would cause a USB cable not to be able to transmit data over to a headset. Everything else on this system works perfectly fine and again I unhooked everything at this point in time just trying to find the magical combination of what would work. And when I finally got this thing to output a signal this was the frame rate I was experiencing. This is a slideshow. We're talking one to two frames per second and the controller tracking is so incredibly slow this would be impossible to use. This is not something I can deal with whatsoever and trying to actually get the buttons to respond was one of the laggiest experiences ever. I would press a button and it would be 10 to 15 seconds before it would do anything whatsoever and again I checked the system resources and we'll go over those in a bit. I cannot fathom a single reason for this not functioning and in between trying to restart my computer a second time, all of the Bluetooth controllers completely unpaired. I have had no issues with Bluetooth on this PC, but I did plug in an external USB Bluetooth adapter and experienced the exact same problems. And again, I went through every single different recourse I could think of to try to get this thing to work. I updated my computer, made sure everything was fresh. I've never had an issue on anything USB on this PC until I plugged in the PSVR 2 adapter. And then I thought to myself, why in the ever loving hell am I wasting my time doing this? I'll just grab my Quest 3, either play it wirelessly or plug in one USB-C cable into my PC and play whatever I want on Steam VR in the comfort of my own studio without having to fight for hour upon hour trying to find some magical setup. I made sure my GPU had the most current drivers. I even disabled and enabled my USB drivers for my PC and made sure those are up to date and absolutely nothing would help it. I was using 32% of my i9 12900K trying to set this thing up. Definitely a lot of ceiling there. I was using 28% of my 3080 Ti. I did absolutely everything I could think of, including testing my backup PC that also exhibited the same issue. Moving over to some standard PSVR footage on Resident Evil 7 on PlayStation 4, this is how it should look. I just can't think of anything I could possibly do to make sure this worked. I even went into the system settings and made sure the USB power management was not trying to throttle anything down. I deal with technology on a daily basis, whether it's on a film set, whether it was previous job, teaching college kids how to deal with technology, and I do a lot of it on the channel. I assure you I tried absolutely everything I could possibly think of to get this thing to work on two different computers, and I absolutely could not get it to happen. I'm guessing there is either some sort of software situation, some sort of magical driver combination with a chipset you need, or otherwise. But the entire point is, me, someone who deals with this all day long in his job and on the YouTube channel, could not 
get this thing to output an image at more than one to two frames per second. So maybe you'll get lucky and maybe it'll work for you first time, but if I can't get it to go, odds are it's going to be a problem for a lot of people. And the reality is if you read reports online, it's been a disaster for a ton of people. So as far as this thing is concerned, the video is completely different than I thought. We're done. Don't buy it. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.